Rockets are the primary form of propulsion that is used in spacecraft. They function with an internal fuel supply and an oxidizer supply that is combusted and then used to generate forward momentum. For the sake of this project, we are only going to be looking at different nozzle designs. Nozzles are the part of the rocket that involves the most fluid mechanics and are the main part people think about when they think of a rocket engine. They don't think of the pumps or the fuel tanks, they just think of the nozzle because that's what you usually see. Um, the goal today is to make a short presentation to teach you about the fluid mechanics of bell nozzles and um, the fluid mechanics of spikes nozzles, linear rockets, aero spikes, they have a bunch of different names. And we will also talk about, briefly touch on um, cascading or telescoping bell nozzles. Um, those would be another topic for discussion. Fundamentally, a bell nozzle works by accelerating an exhaust flow to supersonic speeds using a design where it compresses the flow, therefore accelerating it, until it's approximately Mach 1 at the throat. Then it expands to, a, to further accelerate the flow. This may seem counterintuitive as we learn that if you have a pipe with a larger cross-sectional area, Bernoulli's equation dictates the flow velocity should be lower. However, that only applies to incompressible flows going below Mach 1. If we're talking about supersonic gases, it does not apply the same way. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Once the flow velocity is above Mach 1, then it increases velocity with an increase in cross-sectional area. The big difference between a bell nozzle and an aerospike is how the exhaust flows. On an aerospike, instead of using the wall of a nozzle to confine the exhaust to a certain area, it uses the viscosity of the hot exhaust to cling to the wall of the nozzle. The low pressure area in the center is used as a way to guide the plume away from fanning out at higher altitudes. Bell nozzles are far lighter weight, much cheaper to produce, and have a lot more mainstream acceptance. This makes them easier for engineers who work on them as there is more industry experience and we know that they work extremely well. However, this comes at a cost, a loss in efficiency. The reason why there is interest in aerospike nozzles within a space program is due to their ability to keep exhaust plume focused at the right trajectory at a broad range of atmospheric pressures. Bell nozzles are and will continue to be the industry standard. The extendable exit cone has been used on some Russian craft, but nothing too extensive. They work by allowing two different optimal altitudes by having two separate exit cross-sectional areas. But they are fundamentally just a modification on a generic bell nozzle and are nothing too vastly different. The aerospike, on the other hand, has been a project that has been attempted more than once, but has always been dropped for a bell nozzle, in the case of the shuttle, or the project has been canceled entirely like the Venture Star, which didn't bear much fruit. Um, this is probably due to the cost-benefit analysis showing that it was a bad plan, I speculate mostly based on weight and upfront investment that was not worth it. Alright, that's all for this video. A special thanks to Dr. AJ who gave us this assignment in the first place. If you want whatever random videos will be uploaded on this channel for the foreseeable future, you can subscribe if for some reason that interests you. Um, like, comment any questions you have below, I'll try to answer them. I will get notifications. I don't have a huge channel, so I'll probably see all of them. And uh, I'll talk to everyone and watch this video later. Uh, thanks. Uh, bye.